back to Mac Break Studio. I'm Mark. I'm here with Steve. Although you've seen, we've been mixing it up a little bit, right? We've had a few other guests on from our virtual user groups. Yep, mix and match. Yeah, we're having a good time. We're doing a lot of new stuff. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about Fonica Pro 10 and a cool little retiming, back timing. Well, kind of we're, thing. We're, I love the retiming features in Final Cut. There's, they're very flexible. You work really quickly. You just get it right. You move on. You get really colorful bars over your clip. It's just awesome. <laughs> That's <laughs> the most important point. The but to give bars. credit where credit's due, I didn't come up with this tip. He did, and he shared it with me. And I well, and I, I stole it from somebody else. I mean, you know, you didn't steal. steal from, you're no, paying homage. Yeah, I paid homage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they so. say steal from the best is what they say. I, so, I found out about it. I, I would give credit if I could remember where I found it from. Well, yeah, this involves retiming a clip or a set of clips that are actually connected to the primary storyline. So let's say on this particular timeline, I have this uh, B-roll of my friend Abba, and he's diving, we're diving in the Caribbean here, and I wanna, I wanna change the speed of it. It just happens a little slow, and I wanna just do it, I wanna retime it, I wanna make it faster. So of course, most of you already know, to retime a clip, you select it and hit Command R. That's one option. One on, that's one option. Yeah. And then you, uh, you can actually drag this bar over here this little retiming bar and you can change the speed. Now, notice as I'm dragging the retiming bar, it's adjusting essentially the clip side from one end, the right yeah. side of the clip. The out, the out points getting, moving down the timeline. Right, the out kind points. Of, kind of rippling. It, exactly. Uh -huh. And, well, I'm gonna undo that. You'll notice here that there's a gap here. What if I wanted to retime and have the front side of the clip kind of fill in this gap. I may say I wanted to fill in the gap with the speed change. Okay. Okay. This is where, let's see if I can do this here. See this little connection line. This is where this comes in. Right now the connection line is by default at the, at the head of the clip. Yes. I want to change the connection point. And I'm going to just set it for the center right now. Okay. Right, command, option, I'm going to click right on the clip itself. Now watch that connection line jump to the skimmer position. So yeah, now the connection line there. It's hard to see. It's but hard to it's, see. It's, it's now there, connected it's there. in the middle of the clip. Right in the okay. middle of the clip. So what's important to know about that is now when I adjust the timing bar, notice it's adjusting around the connection point and both sides of the clip are adjusting So now. if that particular frame was very important to you to be at that point in time connected to the primary storyline, it won't move as you retime. It will not move. That'll stay dead still. So it's like the anchor point for the clip. It is. Yes, it's like a little anchor point. Now, like I said, I'd like to have the side of this clip kind of fill in this kind gap of here. Back fill that, yeah, so what I'm going to do time. is uh, Option Command a little bit closer to the end of the clip. So yeah, you can't point. go right to the you end. Can't go you right. Get the, uh, right, right there. Right. You can zoom in of course, but I, yeah. no, they get the idea. It's yes, towards the end of the towards clip. Towards the end of the clip. Okay. Yep. So now, uh, again, placing my, my my pointer at the end of the retiming bar and uh, dragging, and this time I'm slowing it down. Notice what's happening is most of the adjustment is happening on the front end of the yeah, clip. Yeah, it's all, it's all moving backwards and kind of backfilling that space. Right, it's backfilling that space, and so it eventually it's gonna, you know. Touch right against it. Yeah. Right, that'll be, that's the magnetic timeline. Yeah. And, doing its and thing. Doing its little thing, but about, right about there, okay? So now, because of the, I moved the anchor point, um, not the anchor point, the connection line. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I, sorry, it, it I got you going It functions like that. an anchor point, yeah. right, but now, We'll zoom out. Um, now, I mean, I, I sh hopefully won't have a little gap clip there, but yeah, just there it is. I've slowed it down and I filled, I filled in that gap. So it's kind of doing one of those fit to fill operations you can do, but without needing to match back to the clip and bring it back in and set in and out points or anything. Right. You're just very quickly saying, hey, I need, I like where this clip ends, but I need to start earlier in order to cover the rest of this B-roll section or whatever. That's right, and, and typically, um, let me just do a blade clip here. Let me blade the clip here. Typically, when I do a speed change, I, 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 I this has been my workflow since version one of Final mm -hmm. Cut. I know if you hit, let's see, Control Option R, Control Option R will bring up the retime controls, right. and you could set it to ripple or not ripple the timeline. So if I make a speed change in here, like fifty uh, percent, because it's set for ripple, it It'll has an effect. It yeah. Which is, I'm, I'm not crazy about that. Which is why. I will typically take a clip like this before I retime it and command and option it. up arrow. Yep, yep. And my timeline, when I do a speed change, you'll tip, you'll typically see my um, time adjusted clips sitting connected, as, as connected to the clips. Yeah, okay. I just prefer this because I can quickly identify well what, what clips are retimed, which ones yeah. aren't, yeah. and then I don't have to run into any of the you know ripple issues, and I can do that really cool connection line thing. Yeah. So this is just my workflow. It's not maybe everyone's, but maybe again a way to think about working with your clips in a way you hadn't thought of, 
again, outside the box thinking. So one further question. I noticed when you did retime this clip, you were kind of bumping up against the other and you weren't yeah. sure there might be a gap. Is there a way to get them together as as one thing so that you know, you know there's no gap between them? Well, you could turn these into a connected storyline. One way would be select it, and I think it's, uh, was it G? You could uh, go to clip, create storyline. Yeah, let's see. Create, create yeah. storyline, oh, command, command G. G. Okay. But there's this other really cool thing that I learned from somebody <laughs> that if you, and you're not sure, you want to connect a storyline without, if you, once you get it really close, you can hold down the G key, and you'll notice you get it close and you but oh you'll see the little, little shelf the shelf appears yeah and then just release your mouse and you've created a connected storyline what's cool about that now you know there's no gap you know because before when you're retiming you might have left a frame gap and now that you've done that there's no gap between those yeah that that's is good. that's a really useful tip that i learned from somebody <laughs> so, uh, that that dragging and, and you're, that's somebody learned it from somebody and yeah that's a fantastic that's little cool. trick. Just a neat little thing yeah neat, steve it's excellent neat. More tips to make everybody work faster and easier yeah. and focus on the creative aspect of editing. You got Great. it. Mm -hmm. So um, please check us out at rippletraining.com. Check out our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Ripple Training. And uh, we'll see you. We're here every week with uh, MacBreak Studio. And we've got a couple great uh, motion magic tutorials, five minute final cut tutorials. Look for those on, uh, on YouTube as well. So uh, thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.